Mr Speaker, um, thank you for the opportunity to speak on the second reading of this bill, um, a bill that had its origins uh, within the Green Paper all those years ago, um, a piece of work that I'm very familiar with, um, that at the same time that the Green Paper, which became the White Paper on Vulnerable Children, there are other pieces of work um, in, in play, the determinants of wellbeing for Māori children, the Family Court Review, and of course the review by Professor Boston on um, child poverty with the experts advisory group. So um, it has its genesis in a significant body of work uh, delivered by significant experts in the field. And uh, I have to say that um, though it does go some way to addressing the issues that were raised by all those experts over all those years of work, uh, sadly it doesn't go far enough. <coughs> I also want to comment on a um, discussion that one of the government members had prior to the dinner break today when he commented on um, one of the other members of the House comments on those people who were impacted by the uh, safety um, aspects that the government minister uh, was misinformed and misinformed the House when he said that what the, the Green member had said was that those who perpetrated um, acts of violence were actually uh, people of um, ethnic origins. When that was in fact not the case. What the Greens member was trying to um, say to the government member was that those most impacted by violence abuse tend to be those unfortunately Māori and Pacific children, Māori and Pacific women. And I found it extraordinary that someone who sat on the select committee who heard the submissions from the sexual violence prevention sector could get it so very wrong. And it does speak to the heart of what happens within a government bill if people who are on the select committee actually don't understand the very basics of, uh, of, of the bill and who they are trying to uh, protect. And the bill talks about vulnerability, and um, we offer this, this label to about 30,000 children that we call at risk. When we freely admit in this House that there are over 285 children living in poverty. Now, I would suggest that 285 children living in poverty are potentially at risk, however, they are not, by that definition, covered under this bill. So it doesn't go significantly far enough to protect those children. One of my learned colleagues said earlier in the, reading, uh, the second reading of this bill that the, what we should be looking at is setting some standards for our children for their care and protection, that we should be setting some outcomes for those children. And when children are not meeting those outcomes, then we could look at targeted services for those children. And I think that's a much fairer approach. It actually is an approach that speaks to um, our desire uh, for all of our children to have an element of care and protection in their lives. And when we look at those potential outcomes that would protect our children, the first one, of course, has to be tackling the issue of child poverty. You know, child poverty is freely accepted by both sides of this House to conservatively uh, be impacting 285,000 children. And yet, we defy the experts by refusing to measure child poverty. So we are therefore not, not dealing with the specific issues that hold these children in the state. One of the other outcomes we should be looking at is, is housing, the affordability of housing, appropriate warm and dry housing, housing that families can occupy that permit them to put down roots within a community. One of the symptoms of vulnerability is the transience of our families, where, uh, they, where children move to different schools, different communities, uh, and the support services and agencies are no longer able to track them to continue providing care for them. So when we're talking about care and protection, we should be looking at housing. Uh, just finally, I want to talk about one of the other aspects of this bill when we talk about safety checks in the workforce, and it's already been covered by a couple of members in this House, but I also want to reiterate some of the comments by my colleague Sue Moroni, that the harm to children doesn't necessarily come within the paid workforce. 
There are many examples when children are harmed in sports um, uh, arenas or uh, by other activities that, that occur in the communities where we do not pay that much attention to children's care and protection. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker.